originally it was like a big roll of canvas that I kept for over 20 years. Um, I brought it from New York because I, I, I thought at some point I will paint again. So it's been in storage. Um, and then when I was thinking about painting again, I, I looked for the canvas and found that it was eaten by termites. Um, so that was kind of depressing. So I took it out. It was out in my studio for about a year because I couldn't deal with it, but I couldn't throw it out. And then when we were talking about Boro, I was thinking of doing something else. But um, going to my studio and looking at the canvas eaten by termites almost every day, um, I guess early this year is when I started working on, on that canvas I, I knew what I was going to do with it. I said, um, Alam mo, bubuuin ko to ulit, this canvas. It was supposed to be painted on, but I figured since it's borrow, I will I will make it whole again. So that's that's the story of that piece. And it's called um, We Don't Die in One Day, We, we Die Slowly. Sorry. You don't die in one day, you die slowly. And I got that from an Eastern guru who was talking about when you die, you, you actually burn your belongings or the people behind, you know, who's left behind. Um, so that got me thinking, what do you keep? What do you try to save? What do you, you know? So I was toying with that idea that I wanted to save the remnants of those tattered canvas pieces. Oh, um, I just want to mention that the title of the pair of shorts that used to be a pair of pants is called Laybird, Laybird, you know, with a U. Because um, I, they were my work pants. So um, I'm also, I also do a lot of works um, um, in relation to labor, how, like from Trapos, you know, like what makes it art and what makes it craft or what makes it utilitarian, um, it's all labor. Um, how it's given credit, how it becomes elevated. Um, these are like interesting questions to me. That was actually, it's like a pair of pants. Um, that was also part of the termite infestation. It ate a lot of my, not just that huge piece of canvas, but it ate like old paintings and huge canvases and um, huge sketch pads with drawings among many other things. So the, the, the jeans, they were like my work jeans and that those were also eaten and I wanted to do a series, but I only had time to do one. So um, the, the termite line was like across, like around the knee section. So instead of keeping the pants that might just fall off, I just like tore it out and then patched and stitched and mended the shorts, which is very Boro. I mean, if you know the history of Boro, um, it's not really, um, I kept to like the, the idea of borrow, which is not to embellish, you know, so it's very basic. It's to mend something that's been, you know, I know, um, na pod pod na siya, na las pag na siya. So it's just, you know, it, and I actually help, um, Gemma and Rose, um, Gemma is like a neighbor. Um, they're from the province and that's actually what they do to their clothes. So I asked Gemma to, to actually sew the, the, the repair because I think if I had done it, I would like make it like more maate, like art, artify it. And I wanted it very authentic. So, you know, it's, yeah, I think it's authentic that way, that it's mended 
how people who usually do it would do it. It's like a constant problem. It's like a, it's not really a love hate. It's like a hate hate. But you know, um, termites were here first. Um, the forests are gone, so they they eat what they they eat, which is wood. And I love wood, so my house is full of wood. My house is pretty much made of like a lot of wood details, and I have a lot of wood in my studio. So that's you know, that's part of the game. So you just deal with it. So it's it's very um, parallel to like borrow. Um, you just repair and you mend. And when uh, I, I, I have actually, I wasn't working for many months last year, like probably like seven, eight months, which is like the longest time. I, I usually work every day and I knew what to do with that canvas, but I couldn't do it. I wasn't psychologically um, ready to do it, but I guess the deadline helped. Normally deadlines don't help me. I just keep working. So I don't have to stress about that, not having enough works. I usually have like too many works. Um, so that made me, I cleared my work table, which is hardly ever clear. And that made me start fresh i guess psychologically and i started sewing which i rarely do um and it was kind of a cathartic um um moment to actually you know it, it was sort of close to meditating it's like you use your hands and you it's so basic you you mend something so it was nice to see it slowly um, getting whole again. When we were talking about it, like, like maybe two years ago, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, I, I just started uh, looking at what I had because I have a lot of materials. And since we couldn't go out, I usually, well, I look at my inventory and I had a lot of pencils. I had a lot of sketchbooks. I haven't drawn in decades. So it was my way of coping with the pandemic to actually not pressure myself into doing, you know, big things. It was just like a, like a diary or a journal or like a practice. So, you, you, you know, you just draw it. So I started drawing um borrow looking drawings um the textiles because most of them are like blue um so i i did a bunch of them and then i i thought it would be interesting since most of them are like patchwork and blue so i sort of mimic i guess in a contemporary way instead of putting them together having them small having the small pieces framing them and then installing it in the gallery in pieces, like in fragments. Um, so it was like a, an experiment, a light. And I thought I was, I thought I did a lot. So I only gave like 24 thinking that's too much already. But when I saw it at the gallery, it's like, that's it. That's all I did. And, you know, I have more um, sketches, um, but, you know, anyway. So that's the story of that. And then I, I tried using inks and water-soluble pencils and uh, dermatograph. You know, I was just sort of getting reacquainted with my materials. I, I also use good paper, but it, you know, like, I guess the reason why I, I it took me so long to get back to painting was because um, when I was in art school, um, my, my professor said, even if you have like uh, your last canvas, it, you're sort of intimidated by a material that, you know, costs a lot of money. That's like really good because, of course, you want to make good art from the material that you have that is good. So it sort of pressures me 
um, there's this pressure in my head, but I realize when I use something, and this is not just for drawing, for like most materials, I, I use like materials that uh, mostly don't have any value anymore. Um, it's, it's fun to actually um, make them alive again and make them, you know, there's no pressure in it. Um, and then you, when you do a lot of those and then you, you actually are successful in making something that you like, then it, it's like, great. It, this is like, you know, from, I don't want to call it trash. Um, they're like scraps. So I always see possibilities in something, something that's broken or something that's expired its use. <laughs> Uh, does that make sense? Um, you know, cigarette butts, white hair, uh, you name it. Um, pieces of wood, scraps, um, extra materials from construction. Um, they're like waste, and I don't like wasting things. I always see possibilities. So aside from using a lot of... Um, um, you know, the, the, most of the sketch pad had like acid already, but I kind of like the acidity of it. Like it's it's aged and I, I like that look. And I like to make it useful again. If you mess up something, then there's no, you know, parang, oh my God, nagsayang ako ng, ano, ng, ng material, right? So this way, um, you're just kind of spontaneous and more playful and, uh, you know, you're just like doing it for the fun of it. I think so because, you know, it's so tempting to embellish and, you know, kind of like make it more attractive. So, you know, I, I use raw wood. Uh, I hate like shiny varnishes. Um, I like um, sanding them down so they look really worn out. But when you touch it, there's like, um, I like it. It's very tactile. Um, you won't get um, salubsob, you know, uh, splinter from touching any of the wood pieces I make. I, 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 I use my hands to sand it. I, I like it. It's, it's, that's the closest I can get to meditation, sanding, priming wood or canvas, um, anything that's, part of the process but not the the finished product I, I like the whole process of it sometimes I enjoy it more than creating the final you know it's kind of anticlimactic sometimes uh, should I say enjoyed it um it, it was refreshing it was like a nice discovery because I grew up with my mom um, my mom was like a home economics teacher and she used to teach craft. And, you know, she always had like so many materials, but it, it was more like, you know, like beads and gems and, you know, like very different from my aesthetics. Um, but she did a lot of sewing, like beadwork. Um, but I never tried it. I, I hated doing domestic stuff i mean she used to bake i don't know how to bake unless it's like instant like all those things so i guess it's like karma uh, maybe not karma is the right word but um because i grew up with it so there was like a fam familiarity to it so it's like not and I, I, what i love about board is um it doesn't have to be perfect um, it serves its purpose by mending and repairing. So I like the, the it doesn't have to be a perfect line, like, you know. Um, so I like that. So I enjoyed it. So I, I might actually do more sewing in my next works.